Hey guys, Moran Popper here and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about or help you decide if you need to consider entrepreneurship by acquisitions or if you need to buy companies, if this is something for you or not. As you know, there are two ways or I guess two different ways to get into business. One of them is to start business from scratch. Secondly is to buy a business. This is what this channel is about and today I'm going to show you uh, or think with you on that idea and let's figure out if this is something for you or not. There are a few things to consider about yourself before you decide to go into this space of entrepreneurship by acquisitions. So let's get to it. And yeah, overall, if you want to learn about the space of buying businesses, growing businesses, this is what this channel is about. It's about buying existing businesses and finding general managers or uh, I guess people to run those businesses for us while we grow a portfolio of businesses. That's the goal. That's my goal at least. That's how I that's what I, I figure out over the years. I had many businesses. That's what I figure out is the the most fulfilling, uh, I guess, path in the business space. And, and just the most fun. You can be involved in many different sectors, be around many different people, and it's fun. And you can do it even if you don't have uh, much experience or capital. This is what this channel is about to teach you about this process. And if you wanted to hear more about that, subscribe, comment below, like this video, and let me know what you'd like to hear more about. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to document my journey, share my journey, um, create videos that I wish that I had a few years ago when I got into this space and, and wanted to learn about this space. Um, so yeah, definitely engage with me and, and let me know what you think. I'm, I'm here for you guys. The channel is pretty small right now and we're growing um, in, in a steady phase, which is pretty awesome. I'm getting awesome feedback, but that the more you, this is, this is like the best time for you to engage with me before hopefully we're gonna explode in the future and have many, many people um, watching this that's my goal at least so right now I can be really with you engaged one-on-one -on -one, so definitely take, take advantage of that so how do you know if entrepreneurship by acquisitions is for you how do you know if are you a good fit to buy a business or not so to begin with I don't care if you're a guy a girl or I don't care what your age um, it doesn't matter your age doesn't matter your gender doesn't matter in the end of the day it all comes down to your skill set. If you have the skill set, you can do it even if you're 15, 16, 17, 18. I don't care how old are you, you can get into this space. So your age doesn't matter, your skill set is definitely. I mean, you can make lots of mistakes in the process. To buy a business, in the end of the day, it's a very simple process, but it's not easy. There are lots of nuances involved in every little step. In the end of the day, just finding a deal, negotiating on a deal, raising capital, closing the deal. So it's really, it's a simple process, but in each of those steps, there are lots of things involved that I remember when I, like, I got into this space, I was just like, just, just didn't know. I, I remember missing so many, so many aspects in each of those steps and I'm here to basically fulfill that step. So to begin with, yeah, if you want to get into this space, if you want to buy existing business, I don't care how old are you. I don't care if you're a guy or a girl. I don't care which country you're from either. I'm based in Tel Aviv in Israel, but we're looking at deals mostly in the UK, US, we're also looking at deals in Canada, Australia. I mean, in theory, we're looking at deals all, all over the world. Like I, I talked to businesses in the past in Mexico and in Poland and in South Africa. So as long as you have good banking system in that country, we're good to go. Uh, at the same time, obviously, I think it's better to start focused and then at least personally with our team, we're mostly focused on the UK and US. That's where most of our contacts are. That's where we just really understand the markets. But then if we have good opportunity at other countries, we're definitely not going to say no to them. So I don't care where you are, your location. I don't care what location you're at. Um, you don't have any excuse. I'm from Tel Aviv in Israel, very small country, but we're still looking at deals pretty much all over the world. Um, your age, I don't care how old are you. I'm 29, about to be 30. So you have no excuse about that. Even if you're younger, so what? I think it's actually better because you have more energy, more enthusiasm. And you can even use, if you're young, you can use that as an advantage and sell yourself in a way that's saying, hey, yes, I'm young, but I have experience in, in my age brackets because I understand technology much better. Like, for example, a younger, uh, I guess, guy than me will understand, for example, social media much better than me. I don't care what my experience. And, and the reason for that is just because he's involved in that in the day-to-day -day much, much more. So that alone could be an amazing skill set to have and present it into uh, when you talk to a seller, when you're trying to buy the business to present it to someone and say, hey, I've got those skill sets, I can use them and that's how I can help you grow the business when I buy it. And on the other hand, if you're older, 
I mean, use that. You have experience in whatever sector, um, even if you didn't own a business in the past, you did something in your life. I don't care what it is, you built some kind of experience and skill set over the years. So whatever you did, use that as some kind of perspective to get into the space of buying businesses and presenting yourself to the owners of the businesses you want to buy. Because in my opinion, in the end of the day, when you're going to buy a business, that's the most important thing. If you know how to build rapport with people, I mean, you're gold. And the way for you, the best way for you to build rapport with people is to talk about your story, to say, hey, here's what I've done, here's my experience, here's my skill set, and here's how there's some kind of combination and mutual things between what I've done, your business, and kind of like our, our mutual goal together, which is ideally for you to sell the business to me, for me to buy the business from you, and the final winning win scenarios for everyone. I think what's really important when you get into the space is your attitude and commitment. So first of all, like I said, obviously skill set is important to have, but what's more important is that you use your skill set in a way to build rapport. But all that doesn't matter if you are not committed into this process in general. You need to decide, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to be a business owner. I want to own at least one business. And again, if you watch my other videos, you know that one business can change your life. One, because the businesses we're looking to are businesses doing at least a million a year in sales. Those kind of businesses can change your life. One deal is literally, can, can provide you enough capital to live really comfortable. And the fact that, uh, the, the reason that I even mentioned that is the idea that when you own a business and a, a good business, that might take you some time to get to a point where you can buy that business, obviously to build a skill set, to find the right deal, to negotiate on the right deals with the right owners. In order to do that, to find the right deal, that might take you some time. So you need to be really committed to, to just do that, to do there, to be there, to do the work, to be involved with it every single day in your life, ideally. So I think other than just your skill set and background, which is, isn't that important, is the fact that you decided within yourself and saying, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to own a business. I'm committed to owning a business and to become an entrepreneur by acquisitions, become someone who's out there looking to buy businesses and taking initiative in his day to day to find those businesses. And as long as you have that, you can definitely find your path to learn the other skills that's needed. But if you're just going to put 15 minutes there or 10 minutes there and expect to buy a business within a week, a million dollar business, that just makes no sense. It's like, I'll tell you, hey, go and play basketball and you'll think that hey within a week i might become michael jordan just because i mean it's funny to see that people when they see sport they think no i can't do that because there's a lot of dedication needed i probably need to practice every day to even get to the point where i can play the same i guess field as those professional players and in business for some reason because all of the get rich quick courses out there people think that they can build a million dollar business within a week or within four weeks even and in my opinion just it makes no sense maybe you can learn the fundamentals of business within a few weeks i think you can definitely do that but in the end of the day you need to take those fundamentals and implement them and in the space of buying businesses you can buy businesses pretty fast like i've seen people doing deals within a few days of learning the fundamentals but I don't think it's good to have that attitude of saying, hey, I'm getting to do space because I know I'll buy a business within a week. When you have that attitude, you're probably going to give up if you're not going to buy the business within a week or two. So I want to change your mindset to say, if you really want this, you need to come from the attitude of saying, hey, I'm in this space for life. I'm going to do this every single day, even if it's 30 minutes a day, but I'm going to take some kind of action towards the path, towards the goal of owning a business. And I'm committed. I'm going to do it every single day for at least a year. And I promise you, you do that and success is inevitable. You'll find the right deals. You'll close deals eventually. And it just, the compound effect, you just, every day things are going to compound and you'll find amazing deals. And you'll see eventually you'll have so many deals coming to you just because you built that momentum and you put yourself out there. So yeah, um, second thing about the space of deciding if you want to get into the space of buying businesses or not is just the decision that's saying, hey, I'm committed, I have the right attitude, this is what I'll do for life, and I'm fully into it. Now, people ask me if I can do it part-time or full-time. Like anything in life, I really think that in order to really be a master in, in anything or excellent in something, 
the more time you put into it, the better you'll be, obviously. It's like learning to play the guitar. The more time you'll put into it, the better you'll be. Just inevitable. I do understand the fact that many people who watch this have full-time jobs, have maybe an existing business that they need to be involved with day to day. So for those people, I want to tell them, hey, it's very, very doable to do that as a part-time thing, uh, but it's got to be consistent. And I mentioned it like a few seconds ago, the idea that you can put 30 minutes a day, one hour a day, and it's awesome. The progress that you can make if you really put focused energy for one hour a day on anything, you can really progress in space. It's like if you're going to put one hour a day into working out, you'll eventually get in shape. Obviously, you need to take care of your diet, but one hour a day can really change your life. You just got to be consistent. That's why if you have existing job, existing business, it's okay to have that as some kind of, uh, I guess, fundamentals for income to live from. Um, but you got to put consistent time. Even if you do it part-time, you decide to, you want to get into the space of buying businesses part-time, that's okay. You need to understand that it might take you longer to buy your first business versus someone who's going to put 15 hours a day or even eight hours a day. Obviously, that's a bonus. At the same time, you need to remember that those people who are saying that they put 16 hour days, work days, it sounds cool and all that, but I don't know anyone who really, who is really, um, what's the word I'm looking for, productive and executing 16 hours a day, all day. You see what I mean? You can achieve many times in one, two, three hours, focused, really, really focused, on specific tasks to achieve or achieve, you can literally achieve in two, three hours many times what people achieve in a day because when you fully into it like 24 seven, you allow yourself to relax, you're not really focused. Many times you just think about what to do. And when you have the job, just see it as a benefit that you have only one, two, three hours a day to put into that side hustle that buying a business um, plan of yours and understand that as long as it's focused, as long as you know exactly what you're going to do in those three hours, you can achieve in two, three hours a day, or even one hour a day, so much more than people who are into it full time. Just because many times, for people who are doing anything full time, as, as uh, I guess, entrepreneur, as someone who is own boss, many times, a lot of that time is just going to be, re it's going to take you a lot of time just to find out what you want to do with your day, if that makes sense. So. Don't be discouraged by the fact that you have a full-time job. You can still do it. Now, as for opportunities, in my opinion, to buy existing business, to go into the space of entrepreneurship, buy acquisitions, uh, in my opinion, there you can get the biggest benefits financially and also uh, based on lifestyle and just even emotionally, at least based on my personality. I'm the person, I like the art of the deal. I like to be involved with people. I like to take, to be in to, I guess, be the one responsible for the vision, for the big side of things versus the day-to-day -day menial repeatable stuff. If you're that type of person, if you're ADD, you like to be involved in many, many things, it's awesome. And the benefits that you can get in this space, the, the wealth that you can build, I don't know any space where you can build wealth so fast in such a fun way, let's say, because in the end of the day, it's business, it's fine, it's awesome. We're getting into existing businesses that's already making us money from day one. So pretty much your only goal, if you don't have existing business that you're not involved in the day to day, your only goal should be to buy one business that have existing management team in place that will provide you enough capital to live from. When you have that, we are pretty much financially free because you're making enough income every month, but you don't have to work for that income. That income will come in to you whether you work or not. When you get to that stage, that's where really, I guess freedom is up. You, you have complete freedom because you can then decide if and how much you want to work. And then most of your actions are gonna come from inspiration and not from desperation, which I think, in my opinion, when you're taking action from inspiration, that you're doing that action if you, so, so you're taking that action not because you need to, but because you want to. I think that that's when your life really changes. When you're not desperate for your next paycheck, when you're doing things just because you like it and just because the fact that you know that you can contribute a lot. Like those videos, I don't have to do them, but for me, it's fun. It's an opportunity for me to help people who want to get into this space. It's something that I wish that I had when I started. And it's an awesome win-win scenario. Don't get me wrong, I do have my agenda with those videos. First of all, it's, it's awesome to practice the idea of talking in front of the camera, just talking in general and working on my delivery of value and content. 
And in the end of the day, I know that the more that this channel is going to grow, the more deal flow I'll get and the more opportunity I'll have to buy businesses and help businesses and grow businesses. And obviously, it's a win-win for everyone. I can help businesses and then eventually obviously grow my net worth as well and just make it awesome for, for everyone. Now, let's talk a little bit about experience and track record and all that. People ask me, can I get into a business, owning a business, if I don't have any experience? So let's say you just finished college, you don't know anything, you never ran a business before, or let's say even you didn't go to college, right? Can you still buy a business? The simple answer is yes, but I will, I guess, separate the answer into two, because obviously, if you have 20, 30 years of experience of running a business or just owning a business, obviously your life's gonna be easier, especially if you're gonna buy a business in that sector that you already have experience in. So it's like you asked me, do you think um, 18 years old kid who never did any business before and Elon Musk have the same, the same uh, I guess, uh, chances of buying and winning and running a successful business? Obviously, it's not the same. Why? Because someone like Elon Musk or anyone who's really successful in business already, if you decide to go into the space of buying businesses for a living, you already got experience, track record, sometimes capital to invest, which obviously helps. You don't have to have your own capital but it means that you'll need to be more picky on deals. If you're Elon Musk and you have access to lots of capital, you can buy whatever business you want and you're pretty much good to go. When you don't have any capital, you need to be more picky on buying the right businesses for you based on your budget or not. But if you don't have any budget, you need to know that you find the right businesses with the right assets to leverage in order to buy them. And that's the fact. Even if someone like Elon Musk was looking to buy a business, then just his contacts, and even if his track record, if he, even if he didn't have a track record, just his contacts with people in the business space, especially if he's looking to buy businesses in sectors that he already know and understand and know people in, that's a huge bonus. I mean, just the fact that you know suppliers and customers and potential um, joint venture opportunities or different businesses in that sector to provide to you more upside to your business that you're looking to buy, obviously that's a huge bonus, but it's not a must. If you're younger, like anything in life, you'll need to really, I guess, just hustle your way up to the top and it's uh, it's going to take you some time. But if you're really committed to the fact, you just decide, hey, this is what I want to do for a living, you'll build your contacts over time and you'll get there eventually. It's just going to take you some time. Everyone got their own, I guess, learning curve and path in life and you just need to take wherever you at, you had and just use that. So don't use it as an excuse, hey, I don't have experience like Elon Musk or his contacts, so I'm gonna give up on this completely. Don't be like that. Just understand that everyone had their own journey and you need to start somewhere. So even if you're starting from scratch and I don't care how old are you, even if you have no experience in business at all, use that, whatever you have, use that as an advantage. So like I said, even if you work in McDonald's and you did, I don't know, you work in the cashier and you used to know how to upsell people to buy more chips, like a bigger chips or bigger Coca-Cola, use that to say, hey, I know how to sell people and use that as your selling um, perspective when you buy a business or talking to a business owner. Whatever you have, use that as experience. Whatever experience you have, use that as a benefit and understand that even if you know no one, you need to build those contacts. It's going to take you some time and it's all good. It's part of the process and it's a fun process to be involved with. And as long as you learn to just enjoy the day to day, the conversation with business owners, the the rapport, the, the understanding that you get on business in general just by being involved and talking to business owners, I think it's worth it um, alone. Now, the next main thing is, can I get into this space of entrepreneurship by acquisition if I don't have any capital? So obviously, the more money you have in life, the easier things gonna be for you. If you have $10 million in the bank and you're looking to buy a business, obviously it's gonna be easier for you to decide and be picky on what businesses you wanna buy. If you have no capital at all, you can still do those things because the businesses that this channel is all about is to buy businesses even if you have no capital or experience. The way we do it is we use the business assets and we basically leverage those assets to finance the acquisition. Plus we're using the business yearly cash flow to cover some kind of uh, part of the acquisition costs. And it's all good, it happens all the time. You can still buy businesses if you have no capital. You just need to find the right businesses that have enough assets and then it's just a matter of going to financial partners, raising the capital from them. Those can be anywhere from banks to private and wealthy individuals who will provide that capital for that deal. So initially, if you don't have any capital, you might need to give up equity in the deal in order to bring in partners who 
are not involved actively in the deal, but you're just bringing passive man money, which is all good. You might take less equity, but you'll build your experience. And I think it's amazing to start that way. That way you also build contacts with individuals who can then help your business grow because they have the experience. They just don't have the time. So they'd rather just put the capital, let you be involved more in the day to day, and they'll just provide most of their capital and their contacts and maybe even some advice on that business. Another th thing to consider when you get into this phase of entrepreneurship acquisition, I guess it's just your values. So I think there are specific values that will determine if this space is for you. So first of all, it's just your freedom and flexibility about days and work and hours that you put into your job. So for example, if you um, working for someone else, all they mostly care about, obviously you have your goals and things you need to achieve when you work for someone else, but they mostly care about you being there for a few hours every day, putting your card and going out whenever they tell you to. When you own a business, your your only I guess the only people you need to uh, take care of are your customers and employees. They don't care about how many hours you put into your day. They care about the results that you're going to provide to them. So if you have a product, your customers don't care if it took you eight hours to provide that product or service, or it took you eighty hours to provide that product or service. All they care about is that they're getting the value that they accepted expected when they paid for the product, and it's a very it's two very different things. So for example, if you own a business, you can work or not. It doesn't matter as long as you can provide the value that you promised to the client at a fair price. When you work for someone else, you many times, yes, you need to achieve things, but many times you need to be in hours that just make no sense. Even if you have nothing to do or you have a lot to do, you still need to do your specific times. Um, just the fact that also, when you work for someone else, many times uh, you don't need to think about your job after you finish with your job. When you want a business, you think about the business 24 seven. Um, I don't care what business it is or what your day to day involvement it is. You're always thinking about it. Now, don't think it as something bad as something that's going to take you lots of time. It, it, for me, it's just fun. So it, it just it, it's not me thinking in an obsessive, obsessive way about business. It's just me going out there living my life normally and seeing anything in life, every opportunity, as something that can help my business. So everything that I'm looking at out there, I'm just thinking, how can I help the business that way? Um, so it just, for me, it's just fun. It's just inspiring creativity in your mind because you're just in it all day. And there's there's literally a purpose to your day-to-day. -day. Everything you see in your day-to-day, -day, like you see a billboard, it just makes you immediately think, how can that be applied to my business? Which is pretty cool, I think. Another key difference when buying a business or being a business owner in general and pursuing this entrepreneurship acquisition is the fact that you're responsible for everything. As the owner, you need to take responsibility for everything. You're the one to blame for everything. You can't blame anyone in your, I guess, in your place or your department in, in when you work for someone else. You're literally responsible for everyone. You can't go out there and blame someone. You need to take responsibility for everything, even if one of your employees fucked up with anything you need to still take everything on you. And even if one of your employees fucked up, you need to look inside and think with yourself, why did, what did I do wrong to maybe not provide the right training or the right, I guess, uh, bonuses or anything that will make sure that employee is providing good results for me. You can't think about I'm blaming the world for what happens to me. You need to think, this is my word. I'm creating my reality, what I'm doing right or wrong. I'm responsible for 100% of the results that I'm having. And it's a really, uh, I guess, key, th there's a very huge difference in my opinion, in your perspective about life in general, when you take full responsibility or not. If you're not willing to take full responsibility, I don't think this space is for you on, on buying businesses and owning businesses. If you're looking to blame and you're always criticizing someone else and you're not willing to take responsibility for everything, you need to think about maybe just work for someone else. At the same time, I think the rewards are amazing. Everything that you do is directly responsible and coming to you. So as the business owner, if you're doing something good, if you're selling a product, if you're increasing sales, it's coming back directly to you in revenues, in profit. I mean, everything that happens that is positive in owning the business, that's also directly 100% on you. Obviously, with the help of your team, um, they probably, obviously depends on your role, they're probably responsible to, to most of it, but it's still you there, you're there as the vision, as the, the person looking at them. So. It's, it's really a good feeling knowing that even if your employees did something, you know that, hey, I'm responsible for him. So probably some of his success is, is for, on me as well. So it's, it's a great feeling to have something like that too. 
Another thing with owning a business is the ups and downs. So if you're emotionally unstable, it might be really difficult for you to own a business because I don't care what business you have or what business you're gonna be involved with, you're gonna have ups and downs. I mean, lots of time with working capital challenges and just employee challenges and many things that can happen with business. So you need to be, uh, I guess, prepared for that, just for the idea that, hey, uh, I'm gonna have ups and downs, lots of emotional ups and downs, because like I said, owning a business is like having a baby and you need to be prepared for it. But at the same time, life is like that. I don't care what you do, probably if you're working for someone else or just living life in general, you're gonna have ups and downs. So you need to take everything in perspective and understand that these two shall pass. So whatever happens now, if you're there up or down, these two shall pass, it's part of life. And you just need to try to see everything in a perspective that isn't attached to anything and it's just enjoying the process and just trying to make the best out of it and really just add value to more customers, more people. And I think that as long as you have that in mind, just the, the adding value attitude, you'll, you'll be good. So yeah, this is this is this for, for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I gave you a few thoughts on the idea and, and, and how it feels like owning a business and getting to the space of buying businesses, kind of like what you need to expect what are you looking to, I guess, finding yourself to understand, hey, this is for me or not. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of content, if you want to learn more about this, this space of entrepreneurship, by acquisitions, of buying businesses, growing businesses, um, most of my first videos are going to be about how to buy businesses just because there's no content like that out there at all. But the real work starts after you buy a business. That's when the real work starts, when you want to get into a space and really grow the business. So if you want to grow a business and buy a business with my team, with me and my team, and want to watch our back and see how we do things, definitely look at the description below, get in touch. And yeah, if you like this content and want to hear more, subscribe to the channel, make sure you're not missing any video. And uh, comment below, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think is the biggest challenge when owning a business is. If you're a business owner, and if you're not, tell me what you think will be the biggest challenge for you if you're going to get into this space of entrepreneurship acquisition or just owning a business. What do you think is the biggest challenge uh, it's going to be when you own a business. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.